not only uh, business, but it's how does the state of Israel support that business and bring it further into our marketplace so that we can have the qualities of the panelists that we just heard rise up and have very successful companies, not only from I countries of Israel, India, and Ireland, but that we can bring forward ingenuity, innovation, and investment from the likes of uh, Sequoia, and later today you'll hear from Patango, which is Israel's largest VC, and later today you'll hear from Jerusalem Venture Partners, which is making quite a splash both here in California. And with that in mind, as you're looking at some of your handheld devices and reading the news, uh, we're going to learn about a, a gentleman who has totally innovated the world of instant messaging. But before that, I'd like to introduce to you the Consul General for the State of Israel, who is based in our fair city here in Los Angeles. I'd like to introduce to you Jacob Dayan to tell us a little bit more about what the State of Israel is doing to extend the brand of Israel into our business community. Thank Jacob, you. thank you very thank much. Thank you, Sharona. Thank you. Shalom, everyone, and uh, good morning. Uh, it's great being here. And when Sharona asked me to speak here this morning, and she said that I'm going to speak with Yossi Vadi, I had only one condition, that I'm going to speak before Yossi Vadi and not after Yossi Vadi. And whoever knows Yossi Vadi knows that I was, uh, I was right. Actually, I don't know, uh, but Yossi Vadi definitely influenced the instant messaging, but uh, he had a bigger influence in Israel. And this is how Jewish mothers think, basically. And I'll tell you the story. The story is that uh, there was a big debate, and there is still here in the United States, when a fetus is becoming a human being. And actually, uh, the big debate is uh, whether it's uh, in the moment he becomes a, a seed and then he becomes a human being, or from the moment he is born, he's a human being. But you know, for a Jewish mother, um, a fetus is a fetus till he graduates uh, law school or, or medical school. Uh, but but from, uh, from Yossi Vadi onwards, uh, a fetus now is actually someone who is graduating high tech. So uh, this is his uh, first innovation. And I, Sharona, I really want to congratulate you with, for this uh, amazing, amazing endeavor because it coincides with two goals that we have in the consulate and for the state of Israel as well. And the first one is telling the whole story, the real story of the state of Israel and branding Israel because whenever somebody hears the name Israel, he thinks immediately about the conflict and how the conflict impacts the, uh, the life of everyone and, and uh, from here, I'm going to NPR to speak about the Obama speech. I have the pleasure of doing that. But sp speaking here, it's uh, not only the better side of, of the story, but it's also the accurate side of the story, the, the right side of the story of Israel. And I don't know how many Americans know that when they are using their computers, whether it's uh, Intel or instant messaging, as you said, or given imaging that is here, and the pill, any, any, any of those issues, those are Israeli-related uh, innovations and how much Israel impacts the daily life of an average American. And I think that the fact that all of you are here today is exactly creating this critic mass that we are trying to uh, create in telling this Israeli story. And today, today Israeli companies are not embarrassed to say that they are representing the state of Israel because Israel is a brand name in technology and Israel is a brand name in high tech and it makes your life easier. So uh, this is definitely one of the primary goals of, of the embassy, of the consulate here, of telling the story of Israel, the, telling the high-tech story of the state of Israel. And the second goal that we have is that actually all of us here uh, speaking about the economic crisis that we have and we are facing again and again and again, but all of us know that this economic crisis is creating now a huge, huge opportunity, and especially for the Israeli companies. I just came back from Israel three weeks ago. I took the governor of Utah, John Huntsman, to visit Israel because Utah, and by the way, he became already the ambassador to China, uh, a very impressive person. And I took him to Israel because Utah got a stimulus package of more than $1.5 billion to invest in alternative energies. And he went to Israel and he met a small company by the name of BrightSource. And BrightSource is Hopefully, uh, nothing has been concluded, but BrightSource will be coming to, uh, soon to Utah uh, to do a huge project, as they are doing right now in California. 
And by the way, and by the way, this is exactly what is going on now because every state, and although there is a huge economic crisis and California is in the, in the top of this economic crisis, those stimulus packages, I need in less than one minute, I promise. Those stimulus packages are providing us huge opportunities and this is exactly why the Israeli consulate is here and why we have such a big consulate and we have, why we have a, a commercial department as well to let you know about the huge, huge opportunities. I met the governor of Hawaii two days ago and we were speaking about the, the geothermic opportunities that we have in Hawaii for Ormat, another Israeli company. So I encourage you to be in touch with the Israeli companies. We are following very closely the, uh, uh, those developments in the stimulus packages and there are great opportunities for Israeli companies. And I think that together we can not only brand ourselves, but uh, make good business. So again, Sharona, Kola Kavod, congratulations, and enjoy this wonderful little event. It is such a pleasure to be able to stand here in Los Angeles and know that we have a direct connect to Israel and that our ability to affect change, to take our own imagination here thousands of miles away from Israel and to be able to talk to you, talk to your staff, go to your offices right here in LA and ask a question, get an answer and do something where we can expand our hands from LA to Tel Aviv to Absolutely. Jerusalem and that it's immediate and we don't have that, 10, that 60 second delay we might be in a conceptual tunnel, but we're making it happen directly now. And Yaki, thank you so much for thank making you. it possible for sure. us to thank you. be here on the Pacific and talk to the Mediterranean. And now to the real ambassador, the ambassador of high tech, Yossi Vardy. Thank you. As, as Yossi Vardy comes up, how many of you here know the name Yossi Vardy? How many of you here do not know the name Yossi Vardy? All right, so just a scan few, great. So part of the takeaway, you know, is your charge is to talk about what you've seen here at the Israel conference, what you've learned here, who you've met, and what you're going to do about it. Part of knowing uh, people who are change agents, who are captains of industry, who reach out and say, what's in the curve? Where is, as the hockey fans say, know where that puck is going? So, how do you see tomorrow? And part of being in a conference like this is talking to people, expanding your imagination and ideas so that you can actually be part of tomorrow and be part of that deal. One of the qualities that Yossi Vardy has, which I think is a remarkable one, is he's looking at what's viral, what will take off, what requires a lot of advertising money and what requires no advertising money whatsoever because it it becomes electric. And one of the things that has changed the lives of everybody worldwide is a company that Yossi got involved with, which he'll tell us a story on, where now each of you don't look down at your PDAs, because I know you want to do instant messaging and tell everybody that you're here in the room to learn more about instant messaging. Hear about it first from Yossi, and then after this, text everyone you know that you're here live listening to Yossi Vardy, and I'd like to introduce him. Thank you, Yossi, for being here, an inspiration for this conference, and illuminating Thank as you. we learn more about this, Thank you. the secret sauce of Israeli creativity and innovation. Yossi Thank Vardy. Thank you, Sharona. With all these things you said about me, I must say that if my father would have been here, he would really enjoy it. <laughs> and if my mother would have been here, she maybe even would believe it. And one more qualification, I didn't invent instant messaging, period. I happened to support my son and his th three friends when I uh, had an idea. They came to me. They didn't want to tell me what is the idea, which shows you the level of, start as, uh, of trust which I enjoy from my family. <laughs> I had... I had a lot of guilt feelings regarding my oldest son, which I'm not going to elaborate now. So he asked the money. I said, OK, I will give you the money. It didn't remove the guilt feelings. 
And it so happened that by, by giving him and his friends the money, I became a proud member of the lucky sperm club, but this time <laughs> upstream, not downstream. <laughs> so that's, this is the truth and the whole truth. And now let's go to the topic of our talk. I was asked, I, yeah, he was asked is a nice way to say. I told Sharona that this is what I want to talk about. She said, okay. So I was asked to talk about the secret sauce of Israel innovation. Why Israel innovation is so, so unique and so, so great as you, as you were uh, hearing. And I want to suggest that it is not because of the army it's not because of the great, and we have great higher education institutes. It's about a very specific culture that we have in Israel. I'm going to share with you very quickly how much. Ah, okay, fair enough. Now, this is a demo, United States democracy. After 20 minutes, if you want me to continue, just scream it and we will continue. So it's about, it's about a culture, it's about a special culture which if you take all the components, the result is a very vivid, uh, thriving, uh, stubborn, take no prisoners society. I am starting with my picture of my oldest granddaughter, as it says, it doesn't have anything to do with the topic of the of the talk, but I'm not going to pass the opportunity to brag about her. Also, it's positioned me as a nice man, family man, good values. <laughs> so you are all, 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 already you are on my side, which is good. Now for equal opportunity, I have to put my grandson, which I love him as much, and he's also nice. I, he once saw presentation with, where he was not an only my granddaughter, it was problematic. And now the big surprise, this is my my youngest daughter, and when I count up to three, I want to everybody to say, oh, like the Americans are doing. One, two, three. Aww. Okay, now we can. Okay, one of the ways how you raise our... This is, uh, there are few, few here with, very good, I see that. Good understanding of Hebrew, that's good, that's good. These are two signs, the, the, the interesting sign is not, we, we share, you know, we are community, we like each other, we support each other. It uh, says the sign, uh, the sign in the red frame says, Beggar ahead of you, prepare little cash. <laughs> we are willing to take extra risk. You see, lions are dangerous. Do not leave your vehicle. And you see. <laughs> we, have some, we have some help, as you can see, from unexpected. Uh, we are very disciplined. <laughs> As we say in Israel, I did touch it, everything is authentic. So you get an idea about the culture. This is, it says in Hebrew, I forgot to translate, emergency exit. This is only for those who... And of course, the major effect on our culture is the Jewish mother. This, uh, this mother will tell her son at the age of three, after all what we have done for you, asking for one Nobel Prize is really too much. And uh, my mother always complained that I'm idiot. 
She always complained that I'm idiot, I finished the Technion, I got degrees. She always complained I'm idiot. And she explained why I'm idiot. That nevertheless, she probably finished six, uh, six, uh, six years of study, elementary school. She had a deep understanding in genetic engineering. She always complained that my cousins are very smart and they do research, etc. and only me and my brother are two, two idiots, and she provided also the explanation. This was part, you know, of the Jewish tradition of embedding guilt feeling in, in you, you know, I will rest only in the grave, and so, so on, so on. So she said that uh, my brother and I are idiots and our cousins are not because they are not contaminated with the genes of my father. <laughs> So the Jewish mother, if you really want to understand about the high-tech culture, go to the Jewish mother. This is David in the eyes of all the world, right? This is the ideal, ideal of the beauty. And how the Jewish mother want to see David? So food is a big, a big thing. I have a totally different, a separate lecture about Jewish food. We will discuss it something else. By the way, I co-created a few years ago the order, which is our answer to the chef de rotisserie. You know this order of French chef. I created the order of the, of the Knights of the Kishke. And if, if anybody would like to get on the mailing list, uh, let me know. And the tagline of our order is, of course, why these nights are different from all other nights. <laughs> sometimes small is beautiful. You know, we are a small country, so sometimes it works for you. And this is really, we have to pay a tribute where it's all started. This is what Buffett said about Israel. Ask how he chose Israel in his first investment outside America. Buffett responded, some Americans come looking for oil. So they didn't stop Israel. We came looking for brains, so we, didn't stop, uh, we, we did stop in Israel. Remember the fact we don't have oil. I will show you a slide in a few minutes re which relate to it. And in spite of the bad opening conditions in the region, we are doing not too bad. Please remember that we are doing exits for the, la for the last 3,000 years. And we even invented the first PowerPoint, not only instant messaging. Now, as I said, we don't have oil. And we look for the long run, you know, we're in business for 3,500 years. We're all individuals, like everybody else. And we are in the business of survival. This is Jeff, would you please stand up? This is Jeff, you can see him featured in the picture, you see the picture? And uh, this picture was taken in Germany where we played the uh, water ball in a pool of a very nice hotel against the rest of the world. It's always the Israelis against the rest of the world. Uh, Jeff came to fortify us, but we jumped with the, the Israelis jumped into the water with the cloth. And I had there with me my very good friend, the Jordanian ambassador to the United, the former Jordanian ambassador to the United States. And he asked me why the Israelis are jumping with the cloth. So I told him, look, you guys are telling us for 120 years here that you are going to push us to the sea, so we have to be ready. <laughs> we are a very small country surrounded by a lot of government. <laughs> and we are few against uh, many. You see, this is the Israeli beauty, beauty queen there. And uh, we are mer merging in our society, ancient and modern. And uh, mathematics is not uh, very strong. You can read what it says. It says one uh, kilo of uh, corn for four shekels and 15, two kilos for 10 shekels. <laughs> this is a promotion, promotion. <laughs> we are dealing with energy. 
He's, he's, he's half the way, it's already pours. Now, we are in the business of recycling. This slide is taken from a camp which I'm running in Israel called Kinernet, and uh, again, we don't have time. 20 minutes, I have to go off the podium, so. And as I said, everything starts with the, with the Jewish, uh, the Jewish uh, food, the Jewish cooking. I was in TED conference in February. There was, I don't remember the name of the scientist, and he gave a big pitch how you take stem cells. You know, there is a big argument about stem cells, and from stem cells, you can, to, uh, you can, uh, can turn everything to anything. And I say, that's not a big deal. My mother could take everything and everything and, and, and turn it into chopped liver. This is David again. And this is a, rich, uh, uh, a research of Richard Seth John. And uh, he asked why people who are stupid, ugly, unlucky, what leads them to success, to, success, to success? And this is what he found after interviewing 500, 500 people. Look at the push. You see the push? On the left, uh, behind every successful man, there is a pushy mother. <laughs> this is his conclusion. So we are focusing on that part of the equation. <laughs> and this, this brings us to the Jewish genetic paradox, you know, and the Jewish genetic, genetic paradox is how come that this idiot bum, who no gooder, who married my wonderful daughter, is the father of the most uh, wonderful grand, uh, is the father of the most wonderful grandson. Immersed in it, we are living with security issues, It says, we have a suicide bomber every second day. Yesterday, there was one. <laughs> and we are always ready. I'm a bomb technician. If you see me running, <laughs> try to keep up. And now I want to show you, I want to show you a, sh a, a, a short clip. I have to give you the background. Our dear former ambassador to the United Nations, Dan Gillerman, was approached that uh, he, he, has to he was asked to give an interview. He, the interviewer came, they interviewed him to Comedy Central, but he didn't know that, they didn't tell him it's going to be uh, Comedy Central, and they asked him about very sensitive issue, and this is, what Israel will do with Iran. Please note. Nuclear weapons. Would Israel ever consider using its nuclear weapons on Iran? Israel has never said that it has nuclear weapons. So, it's a tricky area then. So let's, let's say, this, hypothetically, I've got a friend. Um, he's an ambassador to a country called Fizrael. <laughs> He's having a bit of trouble with an enemy in Irun. <laughs> Should he use his nuclear weapons against Irun? Israel has never said that it has nuclear no, weapons. No, think of Israel. <laughs> Israel. Does Israel have nuclear weapons? Well, I think you'll have to ask the Israeli ambassador. <laughs> nuclear weapons. Okay, this is, this is an experiment we think out of the box. This is an experiment we showed scientifically that we can transfer data with snails faster than, than with ADSL. If you do the calculation, you let the, the snail go for five seconds. You divide 19.4 gigabit on five seconds. You get like three gigabit per second faster than any ADSL. And we have done it in 2005, we documented it, it's now appearing in a scientific journal which is called the Annals of Irreproducible Results and shows you the way of thinking. Uh, you know people are complaining that we are a small country but we have some advantages as far as the width of our railroad system per one million people, we are much bigger than United States, Japan, Germany. So small can be beautiful. We think out of the box, this is how we resolve, you know, we are a small country, no much parking, this is how we are resolving 
This is another way to resolve the parking issues. This is another way. And we mind our own business, as you know, uh, not exactly. <laughs> we are believing in solidarity. And the next slide, which you are going to see, was taken from an ATM machine during the Lebanon war. You know, the Lebanon war, the north was under heavy attacks, and everybody demonstrated his solidarity. Even the Israeli bank demonstrated their solidarity. It says, people of the north, the bank embrace you. You will be charged 1.25 new shekels for this line. <laughs> this is solidarity of... It's authentic, we didn't touch it. We are individuals. This is uh, in the town of, uh, I, I will not mention the town, they have a, a twin, twin arrangement with uh, Connecticut, and this is, uh, <laughs> they created their avenue, Connecticut Avenue. <laughs> we love technology. This is my youngest son. נראה בית המשפט המחוזי בחיפה אתמול, רגע לפני חידוש משפט רצח, שנייה לפני שהשופטים נכנסים לאולם. We are a bit emotional. This was taken in the Haifa court, when the judge went for two minutes to the toilet. בקטטה ההמונית הזאת בין משפחת הנאשם ברצח למשפחת הנרצח משתתפים כולם. גם עורך דינו של הנאשם, האיש עם העניבה השחורה... We have a genuine natural sense of justice. עיניכם הרואות עוקרים הכל, את מות הדגל, את כיסאות השופטים, לא משאירים דבר במקום. הקלדנית והמקליט נמלטים, המאבטחים מוזעקים לאולם ונועלים את השופטים בחדר למנוע פגיעה בהם. והדרמה הזאת נמשכת גם מחוץ לאולם, את התמונות האלה מצלמת מצלמת האבטחה החיצונית, חלק מהמתקוטטים מחזיקים את הראש אחרים כבר על הרצפה, והמאבטחים מנסים להפריד. בכל פעם שנדמה שזה נגמר, זה מתחיל שוב כשמאבטחי בית המשפט מתרוצצים בין המתקוטטים. בינתיים עצרה המשטרה רק שניים מהמעורבים בקטטה, היום הם חוזרים לבית המשפט, הפעם... And we always express our view, these are kids from, uh, from uh, Golani, and they wrote some phrase which express their view, and uh, for those who don't understand Hebrew, we provide a translation to English. And this is, we are very explicit, I will try to translate it. This is a sign in the apartment house in Batyam. It says, uh, I will just read the last phrase. In regard to thieves and, uh, and robbers, it is true that in this building uh, also old people are living, uh, are, uh, live, but the thieves are warrant to keep the dignity of everybody involved and not get close to this building, the building because they may pay for their life. There are people here with, with uh, rifles that will put a lot of holes in them. So this is kind of a very subtle explanation to the, to the neighbors. This is another, I cannot translate it to... We have great research institutes, as you know. <laughs> we never take no as an answer. We believe in teamwork. <laughs> we believe in teamwork. We believe in teamwork. Oh, shit, this I have to move. Uh, up. Collaboration. There's a competent security force keeping at the entrance of a bank. We are great in biotechnology, as you heard. And you know that uh, you spoke about Jaja, etc. We have uh, local calls. We have various ways of communication, and it's not only some people believe in voice, some people believe in text message, written messages. 
and thank you very much. So I want you to know, you heard it here. You had the opportunity, Yossi, come back, please. Second round of applause. Right. Third, third round of applause for Sharona, who praised everybody, but not, nobody praised her yet. So, Sharona, you have done a really terrific job. Okay, loud, loud. And you have to see also what is going on outside of the room where, where tons of people are buzzing all over the place. So Yossi is, of course, the inspiration for our conference today. And uh, one of the things Yossi mentioned uh, last night was uh, he's going to name a bench after me in some uh, discreet park somewhere in the north. No, no, no. We thought to do it in Kriyat Gat, but uh, we may put now two, two benches. All right. Then you're all welcome to come and sit on the bench in Israel. But, uh, usually, usually we plant trees and we, we invite you to personally irrigate them the <laughs> scout boy way. But. But we have, we have new water technologies coming out of Israel. We'll be able to apply that very shortly to those trees. Because we have the opportunity to have Yossi here, and Yossi insisted that there be room for schmoozing outside. And that's why we have this beautiful hotel, the Lux Hotel, who is a partner, by the way, to this conference. They're wonderful. Have all your events here. So there's plenty of schmooze time. We're going we're gonna to momentarily have some schmooze time. I like the way how, in a very subtle way, she promotes you know, the guys who help. They're very subtle. That's it's, good. It's, it's very, you know, we do our best for the people <laughs> who support us. We have time, but you have to be very excellent in your question. We have time for two questions for Yossi. You have to text them. Just kidding. Do you, uh, to ask something about where we are going with our technology and what, where we've just seen. You tell them what to ask? Yeah, of course. I'm a pushy Jewish mother. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Raise your hand. Okay, Every, everything amazing. is cleared. Well, you've, you've been a good teacher. You've taught us everything we need to know. Okay. And uh, st stand up. Baram, tell us who you are and what company you work with Shelter Capital. And tell him what to ask. And now let me give you a few pointers. Where are we going with our technology? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. I'm glad that you ask. I have here a presentation of 400 slides. <laughs> Look, this, this will take now. This is a very serious thing, and this will take a take lot, lot of time to, to address it. But I, I would like to make, to make one point which is very interesting or very important. The main, the main thing is, I think, not where we are going to, to go with our technology, but how technology was democratized by the internet and by the web. Um, Mr. Hilsig, where are you? Yeah, uh, Mr. Hilsig is, an edit, is a journalist of Los Angeles Times. He wrote a very fascinating and great book, How Xerox Park was created in the early 70s, I think, late 60s, by Jacob Goldman, who later on advised the Israeli government in, uh, in uh, creating the office of the chief scientist and how it's inspired innovation. At that time, innovation came from Xerox. It came from Hewlett Packard, maybe. There were a handful, maybe 20, maybe 200 centers of innovation. And there was a monopoly or a cartel or a ogilopoly. Oligopoly. Oligopoly of the guys who created uh, innovation. It was 15 chief of staffs of, uh, of United States, Russia, uh, Britain, uh, France, Israel, which defined the agenda of technology. Today, there are 200 million kids which sit in their homes. Many of them are in Israel. They have an idea. They take the laptop. They don't have to get into a big computer. They create something. They throw it into the air. Is that it catch or not? And this creates wonderful things. If you go behind many of the great things you, you see today and you begin to, to drill, you see that behind many of them there are like the, the four Israeli kids who came with this internet-wide instant messenger or the two Israeli kids who created voice over IP. Uh, Jaja was mentioned here. The, the, the voice over IP stemmed also from Israel in 95. So today, 
everybody can and he'll think we are waiting for your next book about how uh, innovation was uh, democratized. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yosef, for you, a special book, Tadara Bach.